I'm here with Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, fresh from a wonderful, spectacular win against Johnny Hendricks at the last UFC. Congratulations again, uh, you know, Stephen, and, and, and more importantly, what is next for you as you move from up the ranks in the welterweight division? Well, just defeated uh, Johnny Hendricks, who is the uh, former welterweight champion, number ranked two uh, opponent welterweight in the world. Nobody's done it to him in even under one round, so congratulations on Thank that. Thank you very much. So, yeah, ended up finishing him in the first round, and uh, hopefully, you know, from this, we'll uh, get a title shot. So we'll see what happens next. Uh, that's what we're pushing for. Now, Stephen, you're part of the world's fastest growing sports organization. How does it feel rising up the ranks in this institution? You know what? It's, it's amazing. I mean, uh, you know, growing up as a kid, I was there for the very first UFC. I actually went to uh, UFC 3, uh, where Hoist, uh, Gracie ends up pulling Kimo's uh, uh, hair ponytail out. I remember <laughs> that. It was in North Carolina in Charlotte. Early days, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. So it was, it's a dream come true. Never thought I would be fighting for the biggest fight promotion in the world, the UFC. Well, lots to look forward to. But let's talk about the growth of UFC in Asia. What, what do you think the secret is versus other leagues? What does the UFC have that's different and why is it growing so fast in this region? Well, I think, you know, it, it is, like you said, it is the fastest growing sport in the world. But being a part, I mean, the culture of Asia, uh, you know, the martial arts has been a part of that for, for uh, hundreds and hundreds of years. You know, it's a part of your culture. So I think that's one of the reasons why it's growing so fast here. I guess there's a bit of coming full circle, right? But speaking of uh, circles and arcs, you're looking at a career in the UFC that's quite unique. It's a lot of publicity, a lot of opportunities to be successful, and yet not exactly the longest career path. How do you plan for a career of success given that relatively shorter window in the UFC? Well, inside of the Octagon, um, you know, you have to have a good management team. You know, finding a good management company who's going to take care of you, who's going to make those endorsement deals, who's going to renegotiate your contracts is a big part of, of uh, being successful. Um, outside of it, like for, for example, myself, uh, we, have, we run a martial arts school in Simpsonville, South Carolina, been up for 30, or coming up on 33 years. So a lot of the money that I make goes into that. And also, you know, the city that I live in is one of the fastest growing cities in the, uh, in the world, uh, in the United States. And, and uh, you know, um, uh, investing that money uh, back into the property um, is what I'm doing right now to, uh, you know, outside, you know, I know my career is not going to last very long. So, um, you know, so I have, our, have my school and investing my money uh, somewhere else. So. Well, Stephen, it seems like you've got it all figured out and you're paying for, forward and giving back to the community. Now, advice for Filipino fighters. We all watch the UFC and Signal here. It's the largest subscriber in the Philippines. It's growing. Now, the question I have is what would you advise Filipino fighters who want to get into the fight game to be successful and to be as, um, you know, as promising as your career? Well, I mean, if, if I were, you know, to encourage those fighters, I would say, you know, finding a good gym, finding a good gym who's going to take care of you, um, finding good sparring partners who aren't going to injure you. I've been to a lot of gyms where you go in and feel like you have to fend for your life. These guys are beating each other up. They you like fish bait, right? <laughs> exactly. So finding a good gym and a good training, uh, good training, uh, you know, partners is very important. Um, and uh, you know, it's it's it's. Hard work, man. I mean, you have to go out there and you gotta, you gotta put in the time, you gotta put in the mat time. And that's something I learned from training with world champions such as George St. Pierre, Chris Weidman. They don't make excuses. Uh, you know, when their body's hurt or they're sore, uh, they go out there and they train as hard as possible because they know, you know, when they step in that octagon, it's just him and his opponent. Yes, yeah, so it's like iron sharpening iron. Now, let's talk about your visit to the Philippines. First of all, welcome to Manila. It's a great city. We're great to have, we're welcome, we're, we're happy to have you here. Question I have is what's on the itinerary for this week? Oh, wow, we're doing all kinds of really cool stuff. We have an open workout. Thursday at the uh, MS uh, at the Mall of Asia, right? Mall of yes. Asia, exactly. 1:30 mm -hmm. uh, p.m. So if they can go out and check that out, it's going to be awesome. I'll be out there along with other fighters, and uh, uh, it's going to be a blast. Okay. Well, you heard it from the man, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, here in Manila for the UFC promotional tour open workout on Thursday. Actually, that's a that's a holiday for that day. There's no excuse not to come to the Mall of Asia. Stephen, thanks so much for being here. Look forward to having your career featured on Signal, and all the best for the title shot. Thank you very much. Right. It's a pleasure. Take care. Yes, sir.